Hey, uh. We're Dream Wife. And we're about to play Open Up with Urban Outfitters. Okay, how does this work again? All right. We're Wait, pick oh, pick a, a color. Wait. Okay, I'm going to pick right. red. R-E-D. Okay, do you want to do a number? Three. One, two, three. Six. And we have... Raquel, we heard you were <laughs> opera trained. <laughs> Prove it. Well, this is an easy question oh. to start with. You usually stand up when you do opera, though. Okay, so tell us about the show you played on Halloween with a BYO tombstone policy. So, I mean, this was Halloween maybe two years ago now. Yeah. Um, and we had a show in London, and I spent about a month um, kind of painting all these tombstones. And yeah, we kind of tried to encourage people to bring them. And we ended up taking all the tombstones on tour with us um, and kind of leaving them at kind of travel lodges all over the UK. <laughs> <laughs> leaving them like tucked into a bed. With like some pillows yeah, underneath, so it yeah. like, looks like this like grave left there. Talk about where the name Dream Wife came from and what it means to you. Oh, what does it mean to you? Um, I think more than anything, it's that you guys are my wives, and mm. we kind of take this this family on the road, mm -hmm. living the dream. <laughs> His, it seems more right the more we have done this project. Actually, like mm. I think the further we go on with it, it is it's that understanding. It's like there's kind of a solidarity in this unit, and it is that that, that kind of like you are a family on the road. Well, originally we picked the name before we even made music together and the name was cheeky, it was interesting. Dream Wife was sort of this kind of looking at this kind of idea of a woman as an object, how it was mm -hmm. in the 50s and early 60s of a woman suddenly became part of a package deal. It was the dream house, it was the mm -hmm. dream car, it was a dream job and dream wife, which is so absurd when a human becomes an object. Was it difficult to capture the energy of your live shows when recording the record? I mean, the answer is yes, <laughs> because a live show is a live show. Mm -hmm. And there's like power to that that is never going to be on a record, I and think. it's so yeah. fun. Yeah. The thing is as well, it's the thing where like a song is like this living thing and you know, like a recording of a song is like this one moment. It's like a photograph of a, of a person like going through their life. It's like that one moment in its life. And I think when we play songs live, it's like they're always growing and changing. Mm. And, because it's alive, the song is live, it's not, it's not black and white, it's just mm -hmm. completely a living organism. Talk about your song that was featured in Orange is the New Black. What other shows would you like to have songs in? That was an epic scene. <sighs> to, be, to have our song F-U-U, which means fuck you up, <laughs> and is not radio friendly and cannot be played on the radio in most countries. Mm -mm -mm. To have that on the final scene, of um, a fight scene in Orange New Black is just perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think other shows, it's like, I would love for us to play in like Twin Peaks, like the way they did that on the, like, the, yeah, the second season just yeah, now yeah. when it was like bands coming in, like, I think that would be really, really fun. Talk about your open call for tour support. What were some of the most memorable submissions? We did a open call for a week and asked non-binary and female identifying uh, musicians to come on tour with us and within a week we got almost 500 submissions. I think one of our favourites, we loved one from LA called Aquadolls. Aquadolls, they were so great. They just were so fun and it's so like... Fun. Yeah, I think one of the big things that we wanted to do with the, the tour support thing was to find a way to kind of um, get inside the music scenes of the cities that we're going to be playing in because obviously when you're touring you're kind of passing through places so quickly and it can all kind of blur a little and yeah this way to like actually engage with the the people that are making music and kind of on the same page as us in the, the cities that we get to play in. How do you try to foster inclusivity? Talk about the Bad Bitch Club and Bitches to the Front. We um, began during the live shows to um, ha doing one song called Somebody which is about uh, gender and being judged because of your gender. So it's sort of open for all. But we do at that point ask 
um, women and female identifying um, people to come to the front and to sort of stand with us in solidarity. And it becomes a really beautiful moment because you're also telling them, I see you. I think it's, it's definitely something that we're, we're definitely trying to be yeah, very proactive about safe space and raising awareness of that. Great marsh pits, safe marsh pits, that's what you want. Yeah. Tell us about the letter you wrote to the Spice Girls. <laughs> Tell us about that. Um, <laughs> so the song F.E.U. that we were talking about before, when we play it live, there's a little bit in it where um, Raquel does a kind of take on Wannabe by the Spice Girls. And we really wanted to include that part in our album. But obviously, we can't, we can't just do that. It belongs to them. So I, I wrote out this like, little kind of handwritten letter. Like, it's so cute. Yeah, yeah, with all these kind of stars on it saying, you know, like the... <laughs> like <laughs> it was literally like, like the cutest letter I've ever seen. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it was this weird kind of space between what a child would make <laughs> and what someone in their mid-twenties would make. So um, Spice Girls <laughs> mega fan. And actually, one got back to us and approved. The best one. Mel C. Yeah. Sporty. Sporty Spice. Which means she's listened to F.E.U. Which, which is, is like, so weird. She's given <laughs> F.E.U. her blessing, like, yes, Sporty, yes. The other ones are too busy. We've not heard back to them yet. <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe they would have heard the song if they've watched Orange is the New Black, but... <laughs> if they're into it, maybe I, they, they've heard the room <laughs> I like wonder if they're a bit in the mix. Yeah. <laughs> the game is over. Thanks for hanging out with us. Bye-bye. It was nice.